Hello everyone, Gasclitz and BTD6 here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get the achievement Kalima, which is the uh, official name in the game. And in essence, all you have to do is gain 10 levels for Adora in one round. Now, I found the easiest way to do this is just head straight to end of the road. Now, it doesn't really matter what map you pick, as long as you pick one with a decent amount of water because the strategy I'm going to be using is an intense buccaneer farm. So to start with, I'm going to place a free dart monkey, a buccaneer, and upgrade the bottom part. Now the only real micro you'd have to do I guess is just pay attention and remember to buy hot shots by round 28. Otherwise the buccaneer with the upgrade grape shot can pretty much handle the entire rest of rounds 1 through 35-ish by himself, which is really quite good actually. So there are two main methods to get this achievement. Method number one would involve purchasing 10 levels for Adora, but I don't want to do that as that is quite expensive. Instead what I'm going to do is buy Adora, get her to level 7, and then sacrifice the biggest one. Uh, sorry, not the biggest one, the big plane. No, the uh, the Flying Fortress. Well, <laughs> I'm really bad at remembering upgrade names, but if you sacrifice the Flying Fortress, it'll get Adora enough levels to immediately go from level 7 to 20, which is more than enough to get the achievement. Now, as you can see, the defense is holding up just fine. Buccaneer is doing what he's doing. Dark Monkey's doing what he's doing. But you do not want to buy Adora, because you just have to sell her later and, you know, I mean, it wouldn't really be that much of a hassle, you just have to sell her and rebuy her, but it's best not to, as it wastes around 765, and that's, in essence, an entire round where you could have had the merchant and where you didn't, so I prefer not to. We're coming up on the first merchantman, which is really nice. It's quite funny how absurdly overpowered merchantman farming is, but, yeah, I mean, I'm glad it's there, because it makes achievements like this not too difficult but still adds a little bit of difficulty because you have to pay attention to your defense and make sure you don't lose to mobs, BFEs or just a really strong uh, rush of fortified ceramics. Okay, we've bought our first merchantman and I think I'll just update you when we go into our second. It's now round 19 and we've just got enough money to buy the second merchantman which I'll do and after that I'm going to buy Grape Shot on the first Buccaneer as the towers we have are starting to struggle with the balloon load, but that's fine, it's expected. Um, single, target, uh, single target damage can't do too much past the early game unless it's really strong, so it's understandable. Now we're going to go into our third merchantman. This is one of the reasons I love End of the Road. It's got so much space for banana farms, monkey farms, maximum temporal, uh, <laughs> those are the same things, <laughs> banana farms, and just overpowered farming in general because there's a lot of water space, which means you can get a good buccaneer farm going early. And enough, and I think it is the track with the most amount of placeable space in the game, which is really nice. My only real qualm with the map is that because of how tight the front and back path are, all spikes tend to get eaten by balloons coming through the front, so you have to place spike factories somewhere around about here, which is, I mean, it's okay. I'd prefer not to, but, you know, it's understandable. Now, remember to buy hot shots, because if you don't, you will take a serious hit to your lives on round 28, and probably die on 30, which is suboptimal, so... Now, instead of buying a fifth merchantman, I'm going to go into a favoured trades, and then go into four favoured trades before I finally go into my fifth merchantman. I'm not sure if this is more efficient, but... It is very quick, so regardless of how sloppy you perform the achievement, you'll still get it regardless before around round 70 maximum, so that's nice. See, it's already round 32 and we're going into a fourth favorite trades, which is just absurd. And... <laughs> there we are. Favorite trades number... Oh, sorry, a second favorite trades. <laughs> I misspoke again. The Dart Monkey is really nice as well, because having a free dart monkey really does make early game that much easier. 
and I'm happy that that is a monkey a monkey knowledge upgrade. Uh, I remember I remember back in the days when we didn't even have there can only be one as a monkey knowledge upgrade. There was no you know dark temple. That was really really interesting. I I remember quite a lot of the monkey knowledge trees being added, like uh, Master Double Cross, which uh, allowed you to have two crossbow masters at once. And I don't think it used to always be there, the 200 bonus to your starting cash. I think they added that one. And boy, it was it was great when I finally got that. Uh, it basically allowed me to complete Impoppable for the first time, which I had somehow never done before. Now, as you can see, we're going into our fifth favorite trades, and we're probably going to get it before round 40, which is really nice. And from then on, we're just going to buy our favorite trades every one or two rounds. And yeah, that'll pretty much be what we do until we finally get enough money to purchase the Flying Fortress. And there we are, favorite trades number five. I'll update you um, well, next time anything interesting happens. We are now midway through round 47 and I'm going to buy the Trade Empire which will be our final addition to the income gathering, well, scheme. <laughs> And now I'm just going to buy the Monkey Ace, so we can start getting it upgraded. Uh, Spectre. That'll be great, just in terms of defense, because uh, these Buccaneers aren't really going to hold out for much longer, and that Dark Monkey at the start is really starting to struggle, so it'd be nice to give him some backup. Now, I think we make, on average, around 6,000 per round, so it should only take us around... Oof, I don't know, maybe 14, 15 rounds before we can buy the biggest one. Oh, sorry. Um, I always call it the biggest one, a Flying Fortress. Uh, which, that, that'd be pretty nice. And when we do, we'll basically be done with the achievement. Uh, because, well, all you have to do at that point is buy Adora, uh, Adora, level her to level 7, and then just use her ability. It's as simple as that. The reason I like this achievement so much is because there are definitely quite a few ways of going about it. I mentioned method 1 and 2 earlier, but there is even a third method where you simply buy Adora really late into the game, and then because of how many levels she'd gain per round, she would simply level up over 10 levels in one round, which is really nice, and I think it adds, it adds just that little bit of fun, because after all, tower defense games can get quite repetitive quite quickly, and if you're really good at them, you start to lose interest and the game doesn't challenge you enough, so having diverse challenges like this and achievements and chimps mode as a whole, it's, uh, it's a really nice addition in my opinion. Uh, I remember back in Bloons Tower Defense 5, there was this thing we used to do called uh, Naps Frills, and oh my god, <laughs> it was a nightmare. But it was really similar to chimps, and I'm glad they uh, acknowledged it and added an official mode for it, which was really cool. Uh, oh wow, Flying Fortress. <laughs> I forgot that this is easy. Flying Fortress is super cheap. We should have it at play around 60, really. Uh, now, Naps Rolls. I struggle to remember what that stands for again. Was it No Agents, Powers, Selling, uh, Naps Rolls? Um, uh, uh, it just left me now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it'll come back to me one day. You can always just Google it if you like to know. Uh, and we are approaching the Flying Fortress. And once we do, I'll sell the Buccaneers so we have enough money to, uh, you know, purchase Adora and level her up. Actually, I could just... Yeah, you know what? I'll just sell a couple of Buccaneers early. Okay, there we are. Now I'm going to slow the game down. Purchase Adora. Sell this guy. Get her to level 7, and there we are. Going to quickly use her sacrifice ability, and she's max level. That, uh, that completes the challenge for us, which is wonderful. Hope you enjoyed the video. Going to head home now. Now, unfortunately, unlike last time, I didn't actually have this achievement uncompleted, so I don't even really remember the rewards, but I hope that helped you. Hope you have a good time with the rewards. I'm Captain BTD6. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.